Hello. Hello. Can you hear me well? Hello. Yes. Okay. Hi, Veronica. Hi, Mabel. How are you? Hi, Maria Alejandra. Uh, good. And you? I'm pretty good. Thank you for asking me. Okay, guys. Both of you are doing your observational practice. That's right? Yes, teacher. And you, Veronica? Yes, teacher. Okay, guys. Let's start. You are... Uh, today, I only have two students and no more. So you have to participate because you have to. <laughs> there is no option. Okay. So let's try to. Oh, hold on. You can see. Cannot see my screen yet. Can you see it now? Can you see my screen? Yes, teacher. Okay, guys. So the topic for today is quite related with um with health. So just remember, guys, that this is a listening practice. So I'm gonna share with you a video, and then I'm gonna ask you some questions. Okay. So please pay attention. I think I have this video open here. Yeah. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Wednesday Checkup. Today's topic is going to be about mental health and its rise in popularity across all sorts of media. Most of the articles coming out recently have been really focused on destigmatizing mental health issues, getting people to see their doctor and talk about their emotions, focusing not only on their physical health, but their mental health. And all of these intentions are great. But the problem is that within life, good intentions don't necessarily all the time lead to good outcomes. Is mental health being destigmatized de or are we fueling more anxiety about anxiety by constantly covering these stories, overanalyzing what Selena Gomez is feeling based on outward perceptions? A lot of my patients have been coming in self-diagnosing themselves with a disorder when they are actually feeling normal feelings to maybe difficult situations some patients end up self-medicating medications are dangerous they have side effects they need to be carefully monitored also at times they self-medicate with illicit substances like illegal drugs or alcohol and i have to spend a lot of time trying to convince my patients that their anxiety that they feel in a given situation is totally appropriate and they don't have a disorder. In the field of mental health, professionals like myself, family medicine doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists, we understand the complexity of making a mental health diagnosis. There's a lot of overlap that happens. We have to rule out medical conditions to make sure there's nothing wrong with their thyroid, for example. We have to rule out substance use disorder, that they're, the, they're just not feeling anxious or nervous because of cocaine or alcohol or marijuana. That process takes multiple visits. It takes a line of questioning by a professional who's trained in this type of questioning. But what I seen lately in the media is people talking about mental health irresponsibly even a series uh very popular on youtube right now by shane dawson i don't like speculating about his intentions i like to assume that he had positive intentions to make a, a healthy conversation around mental health and get people interested about it instead of getting help for someone instead of explaining this complex process of what it takes to go see a therapist, to go see a doctor and the stages of how a doctor makes a diagnosis. They created a very clickbaity, fun, sensationalist version of what it takes to talk about mental health. I very much urge people, if you're trying to make a mental health video, be responsible with it. Understand that even if you have good intentions, it can lead to bad outcomes. I'm not saying that this is what's gonna happen. I'm saying that I have a fear that this may happen. Another thing that I wanted to talk to you about is some folks who say, when you have mental illness, that you should just suck it up and you should just get over it and stop whining. That's incorrect. 
Obviously, I totally disagree with that sort of method. But I do think that there is some level of personal responsibility that they need to take upon themselves. In fact, what we've seen with phobias or uh, obsessive compulsive disorders is that exposure is actually curative. It helps. So have that level of personal responsibility where you challenge yourself and you don't use your mental condition as a handicap that's preventing you from being the top and most amazing person that you can be. If you're concerned about your mental health, go have a conversation with a professional. Whether that means a primary care doctor or a mental health specialist, that conversation has to start somewhere. And remember, our job is not to make you permanently happy or to remove all feelings of sadness and nervousness. In fact, you should feel sad at times. It's appropriate to be nervous at times. And again, on the same side, it's not appropriate to always be happy. In fact, the way that the mind works, it's a compare and contrast mechanism. You only know when something's hot when you can compare it to something that's cold. It's about having a good baseline, about coming back to that baseline and feeling balanced. This by no means is a comprehensive mental health video but I've seen such an uptick on the news in covering this, some of it done irresponsibly, and we need to understand that nuance is important, My new details can be incredibly important, and if we're honest about it, and we have trained experts talking about these conditions, then we can have an honest conversation when we're actually doing some good. And most importantly, we look at the outcomes to see if they match our initial intentions. I want this to be an ongoing series where we can have a conversation, so jump into the comment section, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, and most importantly, stay happy happy and healthy. Okay, as you could see, the topic was quite related with mental health. So let's, I'm going to ask you guys some questions. So the first question, let's see who is there because I I guess that there is someone who joined. Oh, it's Ida. Okay, so let's start with Ver Veronica. Veronica, okay, so the first question, we have mental and physical health. So for you, which one is the most important? The mental health, because if you... If you can control your your emotions, yourself, you can also take control about your your physical health. So someone who, for example, someone who doesn't doesn't get addiction to the alcohol is someone who also has a physical health is someone who can uh, can work out in the gym every day and and can get good eating habits and so what are related with the most important, the mental health, to get the physical health. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Mabel. Mabel, are you there? Your microphone is mute. Marvel, I think that is no other. Uh, Ida. Teacher, um, because it's your not well mentally, it kind of affects even your psychological here. It is about feeling good. Um, yeah, uh, yes, I, I think it can cause a, a bit in in your body in mm -hmm. mm. or, or organs um 
What do you say? Sorry, because I, I didn't hear you well. Okay, teacher. Okay, he said is um if you are nowhere mentally, it can affect you psychologically. Here, it is about feeling good. Um, is ca can cause um, como digo, afectación en la salud, los órganos. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got it. Who's talking, Aida? Yeah. Who was talking, Aida or Veronica? I was sure, Aida. 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 I don't. Okay. Um, Mabel. Yes, Isham, can you hear me now? Oh, uh, yeah, I can hear you now. So here, um, the second question. Can your emotion affect your physical health? Yes, I think that... Uh, uh, that yes, my emotion or the emotion of the person can to affect the, the health um, because uh, when you feel well, you you feeling well, uh, the person maybe can uh, afraid of depression, for example, and this is very um, uh, common, very common in the uh, in this moment of on the person and this uh, is very dangerous <laughs> because the people uh, sometimes can die for this absolutely okay so let's uh, let's see the the question number three veronica do you consider the social medias or romanticized mental issues uh, yes, because sometimes there are many uh, stereotypes, many social stereotypes that uh, maybe make the people to get low self-esteem because they see the models or the famous people that share some photos in, in Instagram or in many social media and and they get they get they get uh, sad, they get uh, really they get like a uh, uh, with the they have problems with their self-esteem because they cannot achieve their goals or um, they cannot look like that uh, that social goals about uh, the stereotypes. Um, oh, no. Okay, I understand your point, and that's right, absolutely. Thank you for that. But okay, in this case, um, let's see, Ida and Mabel. In this question, you answer. Um, I want to hear you more, most related with mental issues. In this case, just romanticizing mental issues. I'm gonna give you an example. You know, um. Nowadays, it's so common to see some influencers or many influencers talking about depression, anxiety, um, attack, panic, that kind of mental issues. Um, bipolar, there is someone who is bipolar, uh, what else? Maniatic, those things are mental issues. So um, there are some people who sometimes make um, some memes or pictures, something like that, talking about the topic, 
about mental issues as if those things were um, normal of after your emotion, all that you feel is just a mental issue. If you, if you pay attention what the doctor said, he mentioned that he had to deal with, uh, he has to deal with some um, patients that think or consider that they have a mental disorder or something like that, when it's just normal anxiety, when it's uh, when you are just nervous because it's normal when you have to try to do something new or something like that, that's what I mean, is just a normal, in a normal way. It's not a disorder, a disorder or something that um, needs a treatment. So there are some influencers or some people who usually say that depression is normal, yeah, anxiety is normal, or if you feel this, it's because you have this thing, or if you, if you feel down, you have depression. And that's what I'm trying to say, that sometimes people try to romanticize mental issues as if those things were, wow, like, oh, that's depression, oh, I understand, oh, that's, as if that was a cool thing. That's what I try to say. Um, and that is not a cool thing. It's not, it's not like, a, it's great. It's like, a, oh, you have depression. Oh, okay. It's not like that. You are not a doctor. You are not a, a psychologist. Yeah, that's what, what I try to explain to you. So now that you have a clear idea about it, about romanticize mental issues. I want to hear your point of view because that was my point of view about it because I, I usually use social media like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and I usually see those posts or videos uh, with some influencers talking about depression, talking about anxiety, uh, giving some tips when sometimes they don't have any idea. I mean, um, like a medical or psychological idea um, yeah, about that general topic. Okay, so um, Aida, what's your point of view? Do you consider the social media romanticizing mental issues? Your microphone is, clo is closed. I don't know if you are talking to, to us. Um, I don't know. Um, but I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, no, difficult. Sorry, sorry, what did you say? Because I couldn't hear you. Profe, que sí, creo que... que, que me fue pantalla. Romanticize? What do you want to see? Yes. I think um, that the social media romanticized mental use, but I don't know, like, just the opinion. Okay, okay, no problem. Let's see if maybe uh, Mabel. Mabel, do you want to say something related with this point? Yes, teacher. Uh, really, I don't use uh, many the the social media. I only use sometimes the Instagram. Uh, but I think that about this question, I don't think so. I think that the social need, need media are to enjoy enjoy for a while and to be to distract other person, and we can't let uh, ourselves be affected that we sit in this in this in this part because it, I think that many influence um, try to attract the attention uh, by uh, these means uh, perhaps to gain uh, followers maybe mm -hmm. yeah absolutely that's right 
Okay, guys, let's move on. So here, we had some words of phrases, and you are going to tell me if that word is related with describing illness or medicine and treatment, okay? So let's start with the first one. Sit up. Letter A, what is that? Number one and number two, what's the answer? Side up is the number two, medicines and treatment. Okay, an A, letter B. Is maybe the medicines and treatment? I don't know. Egg, an egg. In English. Do you know what is this in Spanish, guys? Uh, ah, okay. Is, is that a lot? Yeah. So it's describing illness. Describe illness. That's right. Let us see prescription. Medicine and train treatment. A cough. Is the same. Medicine and treatment. Describing illness. Yeah. A cough is describing um illness okay plus sir I, what is this i don't know it's what like is mm -hmm. oh, okay medicine and training it hurts describing illness A soul throat. Describing eyes. Dizzy. This is the first one. Tables. Medicines and treatment. Los Angeles. Describing eyes. Do you know what is that in Spanish? No. Is son como unas pas. It's like a tablets for for the for the virus or something like that. Like, do you know what is not a ver garganta? Yes. Okay, it's something like that. It's like a a pill, but it's not pill like a table. Yeah, it's a table, but it's not the kind of table that you slow, 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 slow. It's like a, it's especially when you have some trouble. You know what I mean? It's like a as I told you, like a not a garganta. It's, it's, that's the only idea I have. The only medicine that I know that is something like that. Okay, so now let's listen to the conversation. This recording is from the British Council. Hello, can I help? Yes, my wife sent me here. I am... Um... <laughs> Need something for sore throat and can't stop coughing. <coughs> <coughs> really hurts. Do you have a headache too? Not really, no. Well, we have this syrup and these lozenges. Which is better? They're both good. The syrup is more expensive. Oh, well. <coughs> <coughs> I'll take the lozenges then. How many do I take? Just one. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. 
I'm sorry. Uh, how often should I take it? Just one every four to six hours. Take it before meal times. Are you allergic to any medicine? No. Then you'll be fine with this. Can I get some antibiotics too? I'm afraid you need a prescription for that. Oh. You know, you should really see a, a doctor if that cough continues. Thanks. I <coughs> know. <coughs> oh, Anything else? No, thanks. That'll be £7.49 then, please. This recording is from the British Council. To find more activities to practice your... Okay, let's listen the, la the last time and then you're going to answer the questions. This recording is from the British Council. Hello, can I help? Yes, my wife sent me here. I um, need something for a sore throat and can't stop coughing. really hurts. Do you have a headache too? Not really, no. Well, we have this syrup and these lozenges. Which is better? They're both good. The syrup is more expensive. Oh, well... <coughs> <coughs> I'll take the lozenges then. How many do I take? Just one. <coughs> <coughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, how often should I take it? Just one every four to six hours. Take it before meal times. Are you allergic to any medicine? No. Then you'll be fine with this. Can I get some antibiotics too? I'm afraid you need a prescription for that. Oh. You know, you should really see a doctor if that cough continues. Thanks. I <coughs> know. <coughs> oh, Anything else? No, thanks. That'll be £7.49 then, please. This recording is from the British Council. To find more activities to practice your English, visit www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English. Okay, so let's answer the questions. So here, you're going to choose the correct answer. Number one. The man needs something, letter A, for his throat, uh, letter B, for his head, letter C, for his wife. For his throat. Yeah. Number two, the man is coughing and has a headache. Number B is coughing, but doesn't have a headache. A little serious in coughing, but he has a headache. Maybe is coughing, but doesn't have uh, a headache. Yeah. Okay, the lozenge are letter A, cheaper than set up. Letter B, not cheap as the syrup. And letter C, more expensive than the syrup. Cheaper, cheaper than, than the syrup. Cheaper than the syrup. Letter uh, number four. He should have the lozenge. Uh, every four to six hours after he eats a meal, B, every four to six hours with food, C, every four to six hours before he eats a meal. Uh, maybe the letter C. Number five, the pharma pharmacist can't give him an antibiotic because his prescription is only for tables. He doesn't have enough money. He doesn't have a prescription. He doesn't have a prescription.
Number six. The man pay. 7.45, or 7.99. Yeah, 7.45 pounds. Okay, guys, very good. So here I have some sentence, and you are going to tell me what is the Sorry, the correct the correct um weight. Okay, so you have to organize. So number Y, number one. If it's better for you, you can type it in the chat. You can type what is um, the correct way to, the correct way of the sentence, of the number one. Teacher, uh, I think that the number one is need a something, so throw. But so, uh, uh, I don't know the idea. <laughs> I don't know uh, understand what is the idea. Okay, in this case, you have to organize the sentence. Is this organized? So you have to organize. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So let's start with number one. You can just take a look and type in the chat. It's, I need something for a sore throat. Yes. I need something for that so throat. That's right. Okay, what about number two? I really hurts. It really hurts. It really hurts. Number three. Do you have a headache too? Do you have a headache too? That's right. Number four. How many do I take? How many do I take? Number five. How often I should take it? Really close, but there is a mistake. How often I should take it? I don't know. How often should I take it? How often should I take it? Remember when you are asking question, the subject change, uh, the place of the subject change, okay? It's not the same when you are asking a question than when you are um, just saying a, an affirmative sentence. So in this case, should come first and then the subject. How often should I take it? Okay, number six. Are you allergic to any medicine? Are you allergic to any medicine? Yeah. Number seven. I am need um, I am afraid and you need a prescription for that. I'm afraid you need a prescription for that. Mm -hmm. Very good. And number eight. You should really see a doctor. You should? You should really see a doctor. Okay, very good. Okay, guys. Here I have uh, two questions. 
The third question is how often do you get a cough? A cough or a cold? So um, keep it in mind that you live in Colombia. I suppose that everybody is living here in Colombia. And we have two seasons of the year, that's right. So um, you can think maybe where is the, the season or the month of the year that you usually uh, or sometimes, not usually, you sometimes uh, get a cough or a cold. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to tell me what you recommend. For example, if you have a cough or a cold, what do you usually do? You know that here in Colombia, sometimes you say some medication. There are people who take some medication. Some of them uh, prefer some, some stuff and drink that things. So you are going to tell me what do you usually do when you get a cold or a cough? So let's start with uh, Veronica. Okay. Um, before the pandemic, I used to get a cold like six times per year because uh, sometimes when the weather is really cold, cold mm -hmm. and yeah. it starts raining a lot, so it's easy to get a cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but because of the pandemic that I, I don't go out a lot and when I go out, I wear the, the mask. Mm -hmm. So I I just get a call like twice a year. Mm -hmm. and, and the weather is not like mm, really cold, like in other countries where it snows. No. Here just it rains sometimes, mm -hmm. but uh, for that reason I I wear a sweater when I when I go out, and when I get a cold, I take acetaminophen, I drink uh, lemonade, I take rest. And, and I recommend to avoid the air conditioner, and that's it. Okay, good. Okay, Aida. When you get a... Yes, okay. Uh... Okay, how often? Uh, almost never. I don't remember the last time I had one teacher. one teacher. Oh my God, you're so healthy. Good for you. You're happy and healthy. Nice. Okay. okay. And in your case, well, in the last time that you get a cough, what did you get in order to recover? Or what do you usually do when you get a cough? Yes, uh, for this case, um, I, I use or I recommend taking pills, um, keeping warm because, uh, the, the, the weather can come up at that or was it? Okay, they can affect you. Okay, and the last uh, student is Mabel. Mabel. Yes, teacher. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, I think that is very common uh, to have a call in the rainy months in Colombia. And 
it's a good idea to get, uh, to go to the doctor first. It's very important this and stay at home in these days when you are uh, maybe the flu or the cold. And it's important to uh, don't uh, to drink anything cold. And it's good uh, to drink hot drinks with lemon, maybe. I'm no more. Okay. Very good. That's great. Absolutely. Okay, guys. It was a pleasure to be with you. Okay. So that's it for today. Uh, see ya in the next time. And have a good one. Ah, oh, guys, please send into the chat. Send in the chat your full name, your email address, email address, and your um the English course that you are taking right now. Okay, those three things: your full name, English course, and your email. Okay, so that's it for today. Have a good one. Bye bye. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you.